Okay, I'm gonna go through an example of graphing rational functions. The first thing you have to do is factor the top and the bottom. So this top factors to x plus two, x plus one, and the bottom, and I'm not going to go into detail of how I factored this, so if you need help factoring, you can let me know and I'll go back and go over these steps with you. But the bottom factors to two x minus three, x plus one. For rational functions, the first thing um, after you get this factor that you need to do is set the bottom of your fraction equal to zero. So that means that 2x minus 3 has to equal zero or x plus 1 has to equal zero. So this is what are called discontinuities or excluded values. Discontinuities um, are locations on the graph where uh, the function cannot go because it is where an undefined value happens. And that's where the bottom of a fraction equals zero, because you can't do that. So we're gonna find those locations as to where, what causes a discontinuity. And we found the first one to be three over two, and the second discontinuity is at negative one. Now we have to classify the discontinuity. So when you go back to your factored function, you can reduce. This x plus one and this x plus one reduce. That's what's called a removable discontinuity because I can remove it. So what that leads to down here on a graph, a removable discontinuity is a whole. I don't think I spelled that right. Removable discontinuity. This three over two is not removable. A non-removable discontinuity is a vertical asymptote. Vertical. That's a non-removable. Discontinuity. All right, now that we have that, we're gonna start what I like to call a grocery list of a lot of different things that we need to build off of with these. So, so far we have a vertical asymptote at x equals three over two. We have a hole at negative one, but that a hole is at an ordered pair location. So now I've got to take that negative one and plug it back into a reduced function. So up here, after we've removed the x plus one, what I have left is x plus two over two x minus three. So I'm gonna plug that negative one into the reduced function and I will get negative one over five. And that's where our whole lives. The next thing is the horizontal asymptote. To find the horizontal asymptote, you have to look at the powers. So from your original function, if our powers are equal, then the horizontal asymptote has to scooch over and use the weak coefficient. So the horizontal is at y equals one over two. And take a side note right here, follow me this way. For your horizontal asymptotes, if the top power equals the bottom power, then you use the lead coefficient on top and bottom. If the bottom is bigger, so if the power is bigger on the bottom, that's what we call J-Lo, she's got a big booty. So that's J-Lo, O-O-O, Y equals zero. If the power is bigger on top, like Wendy Williams or Dolly Parton, that's when top heavy, you think they're gonna fall over, that results in a slant we're not really gonna practice a slant asymptote, but these are the two that you need to understand. Okay, come back this way. Next, x-intercept. For the x-intercept, you take the top of your reduced fraction, set it equal to zero. When x plus two equals zero, and you solve that, you get negative two for your x-intercept. That's an ordered pair on the x-axis, so it's negative two, zero. So for this, you set the top equal to zero. If 
for your y-intercept, you plug zero in for x. When I do that, if I plug zero in here and here, then I get negative two over three. So plug zero in for x. And then just to sum this up, um, compare powers, So vertical asymptote, you're gonna set the bottom equal to zero and um, reduce. If it reduces, it's a whole. If it does not reduce, it's a vertical asymptote. That's the grocery list. Now we've got to graph it. So a vertical asymptote at three over two, which is one and a half. That's x equals three over two. We have a hole at negative one, negative one fifth, negative one, negative one fifth. There's a hole right there. A horizontal at y equals one half. So y equals one half is here. An x-intercept at negative two, zero. And a y-intercept at zero, negative two thirds. Okay. This creates a, a graph divided. Your vertical asymptotes act like walls and it divides the graph into the left half and then if you can cover it up to the right half. So on the left hand side, you have to decide, does my graph live on the bottom or the top? And when I say bottom and top, it's divided by the horizontal asymptote, like the floor or the ceiling of a house. Because these points are already down here, the whole thing lives down here and they are contained by the ceilings and walls of these asymptotes. On the right hand side of the graph we don't have any points already graphed so we have to pick a point like anything on the right hand side of the vertical. So let's say two. If I use two and I plug two back into my reduced function 2 plus 2 over 2 times 2 minus 3. 4 over 1. So an input of 2 gives me an output of 4, which is up here. And since this point lives upstairs, then the whole function lives upstairs. And that's how you graph that. That's it.